Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another service of Virtual Church. For our call to worship this morning, I'd like to read you these words from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Let us worship God and let us pray. Lord God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. You set the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky and gave each one of us life. And yet, despite your power and majesty, you not only notice us, you love us and want to be in relationship with each one of us. And so today, as we come to worship you, we come with thanks for the relationship we share with you. We give thanks for all the ways you love us and bless us, for all the ways you provide for our needs and so much more. And today we want to offer you our worship as a token of our love and gratitude. May all that we say and do bring you joy, Lord. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name as we pray together using the prayer that he gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we invite you to join with us as we sing our opening praise, God Who Made the Earth. You have blessed us with so many things, our families, our homes, our church family. And Lord, you have also given each one of us gifts of talents and abilities that you want us to use to make a difference for good in this world. But Lord, we confess to you that we often doubt or underestimate our abilities, or we are afraid to step out in faith and pursue our dreams because we are afraid of failure. Please forgive us, Lord. Forgive us when we don't trust you enough to step out in faith. Forgive us when we allow fear or doubt to hold us back from doing what you call us to do, from pursuing the dreams that you have put into our hearts. We pray and ask you, God, to increase our faith. Help us to trust in you more so that we will become all you intend for us to be and do. Please guide us in the days ahead and help us to not only know what is right, but to say and do what is right as we follow the example that Jesus set for us. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. This is the good news of the gospel, and it is for you. Whatever you have done, 
whatever you have failed to do, through your faith in Christ you are forgiven. You are set free from the burden of guilt and sin. Believe in your heart, you are forgiven. Amen. And now, it's time for our children's story. Good morning, boys and girls. It's great to be with you today. And as you know, I'm Tom the Tool Man, and I'm wearing my John Moose hat, because nothing runs like a moose. <laughs> All right, now, this week, I was doing some work on the car, and, and I was using my ratchet, and I was using a socket, and I, I was trying to take the grill off the front of the car, and it wasn't working, because where I was trying to get in underneath the grill, was actually 90 degrees from where I needed to put my ratchet. So how was I going to reach the bolt? Well, fortunately, <laughs> my ratchet pivots 90 degrees. <laughs> so I locked it in, put it in my socket, and it wouldn't reach. Now what was I going to do? <laughs> where there's a tool, there's a way. So I got my extension. Put that on, put the socket in, and presto! I was able to reach the bolt exactly what I needed to do. You know, and as I was underneath the car um, and trying to reach this bolt, and, and, and I knew I had the right tools and I was able to get at it finally, I realized that, you know, Sometimes life can be like that bolt, awfully hard to reach, hard to get to. And especially if we don't have the right tools, well, it's, it's hard to reach it properly. But you know, when we tell God exactly how we're feeling, especially if something doesn't feel quite right inside, and we ask for His help, and we ask Him to give us someone to help us, or we, we ask Him to give us the right thought in our minds, it's amazing how when we pray and we talk to Him, He can help us, and well, it's like using the right kind of tools, God can help us with exactly what we need at the right time. And why don't we take a few moments and talk to Him now. So, if you'll close your eyes and repeat after me, Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. And for making me. And for making me. Please help me. Please help me. When I am afraid. When I am afraid. Or alone. Or alone. Or don't know what to do. Or don't know what to do. To ask you for help. To ask you for help. And to listen for your guidance. And to listen for your guidance. Please bless me. Please bless me. And keep me safe. And keep me safe. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, boys and girls. Before our scripture reading and message today, let's take a moment and pray for God's guidance. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as Tom reads us your word and then brings us the message that you have inspired him to write, help us to focus on the words we hear and the lessons you are teaching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For a scripture reading this morning, I'd like to read to you these words from Genesis chapter 50, beginning to read at verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. 
I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The true story of Joseph and his brothers is thousands of years old, but it still speaks to us today. Each of us can relate to at least one aspect of the story, which includes hatred and betrayal, arrogance and deceit, lies and half-truths, loyalty and hope, faith and righteousness, forgiveness and love. At the end of the story, the timeless words of Joseph resonate through the centuries to today when he declared to his brothers, Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. How true. Sadly and unfortunately, all too frequently, we find ourselves on the receiving end of someone who intends to do us harm. I'm not talking about when we've done something wrong, because we are always responsible for our own thoughts, words, and actions. I'm referring to those people who intend to do us harm because they don't like us, or maybe like Joseph's brothers are jealous of us. Or perhaps they find themselves in a position where they need to apologize for something they have said or done that was wrong, and rather than taking personal responsibility, Instead, they scheme against us and intentionally try to bring harm to us. Paula and I frequently hear, Why are they being so mean to me? What did I ever do to them? What's the matter with them that they have to be so nasty? Why are they trying to hurt me? If you have ever felt yourself on the receiving end of someone's anger, vindictiveness, or bullying, sadly, you are not alone. But there is something you can do about it. For many people, they scheme about how to get even with the person who has hurt them. And getting even may make you feel better for a little while, but it will never ultimately satisfy. Instead, God has a better way. In our Old Testament lesson, it is clear that Joseph's brothers are terrified of him, and for good reason. They not only sold him into slavery, they fabricated his death, and they broke the heart of their father. But now, with Joseph's immense power and position in Egypt, being second only to Pharaoh, with one mere gesture, Joseph could have had his brothers killed. Considering this, you would think his brothers would have taken complete responsibility for their actions, but instead, they tried to appeal to Joseph's love for his father. Still, Joseph proves himself to be twice the person his brothers are. Notice what he says beginning in verse 19. Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear, I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Joseph chose to rise above jealousy, anger, hatred, revenge, and vindictive words or actions. Joseph chose to live according to a timeless truth that is repeated over and over again in the Bible. You can never go wrong doing the right thing. Especially if the right thing is doing what God wants you to do. Joseph nailed it when he said, Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. How good are we at following Joseph's example? We tend to be good at holding on to grudges and even plotting revenge, do we invest just as much time and energy and thoughts and prayer following through on Joseph's words? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. Will you choose to allow God to bring good out of a painful memory or experience? And if you feel the wrong committed against you is too great to forgive, consider Corey. 
Fortunately, none of us will ever have to go through the kind of horror that Corrie ten Boom experienced during the Second World War. As a Christian leader in the Dutch resistance movement, she and her family believed that God was calling them to save Jewish people in the Netherlands. Her father built a secret room, their hiding place, in Corrie's bedroom. Every time the Gestapo raided their home, a buzzer would sound informing the Jewish visitors that they had less than a minute to rush into the hiding place. After four years of Nazi occupation and having saved more than 800 Jews, they were betrayed to the Gestapo and sent to a concentration camp. Corey and her sister Betsy endured appalling conditions, and but through it all they were unwavering in their resolute trust in God. Even as Betsy was dying, she made Corey promise that after the war, she would seek God's help to turn their horrible experience into something good. Ten days before she was scheduled to be murdered in the gas chambers, Corey was released because of a clerical error. After the war, Corey traveled to more than 64 countries, using the rest of her life to tell people about the good news of faith in Jesus Christ. She also followed through on her promise to Betsy. She rented a huge country house in Blomendal and turned it into a home for concentration camp survivors. As she harnessed the love of Jesus to provide physical, mental, and spiritual healing to concentration camp survivors, she frequently quoted Joseph's words, even though you intended to do, me, to do harm to me, God intended it for good. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well those are great stories, but I don't have the power or authority of Joseph, and I'm not in a position of influence like Corey ten Boom. You don't have to be. When it comes to taking what others intend for harm and turning it into good, all you need is faith in God, and a willingness to follow his leading. A month ago, a close friend shared with me a painful experience. His boss was consistently micromanaging, belittling him, and frequently bullying him. My friend honestly said that at first, his thoughts focused on how to get even. But then he realized something that provided peace and freedom. He realized he couldn't change his boss, but he could control how he responded to the terrible way he was being treated. He felt God reminding him of the Bible verse in 1 Peter 3, 9, Do not repay evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called that you might inherit a blessing. So now every time the boss is nasty, my friend has made it his practice to immediately call one of his staff to encourage her or him in some way. As we talked together, I realized that my friend was another brilliant example of what Joseph said so many years ago. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. Do you have someone in your life who is difficult because of their nasty, mean-spirited words and actions? You can't change them, but you can follow Joseph's words in the example of Cory ten Boom and the example of my friend and turn what is hurtful into something good. How do you do that? The next time someone is mean to you, immediately pray for a friend or family member. Send an email to encourage someone or call a person who is alone or struggling and cheer them with your words of hope and reassurance. And in so doing, you will immediately turn what is hurtful into something good. Joseph couldn't change the hurtful actions of his brothers, but leaning on the strength of his faith, he believed that God could turn what was evil into something good. And fittingly, God gave Joseph the final word in Genesis chapter 50, when he proclaimed with confidence and faith, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it 
for our good. Amen. Sometimes in life we face difficult circumstances because of what others have done to us. But Tom's sermon reminded us that you want us to remember that even when others try to bring evil against us, you can turn it and use it for good. We thank you for the examples of Joseph, of Corey Ten Boom, and of the supervisor who were each confronted by those who sought to bring them harm. But in each case, Lord, you help them to rise above it, and you bless them in unexpected ways and use them to bless others. Help us to seek to bless others in what we say and do, and to see you at work in our lives, even in the midst of difficulties. Lord God, we continue to pray that an effective vaccine will be quickly discovered and developed so that the pandemic will be brought under control and then come to an end. We long for things to be normal again, Lord, so that we can be together without restrictions. Help us all to be patient as we continue to seek to follow the guidelines so that we will all remain healthy and safe. Loving God, we pray for all those who are gathered for worship this day, wherever they are, that you will bless each one and each household. We pray for any who are in need this day, whether because of ongoing health issues or medical treatment, we pray for those waiting for test results. We pray for those who are feeling lonely or afraid or confused and uncertain about decisions they have to make. May each one know that you are with them. Lord God, we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And we pray especially today for Evelyn and Joe McCarthy as they mourn the sudden passing of Joe's brother-in-law, Ernie. And we pray also for Athel and Betty Ald as they mourn the passing of Athel's sister, Phyllis. Please comfort and strengthen them. We pray for our medical services, for all first responders, and for all those who are working to keep us safe, and ask that you please bless them in their work and keep them safe. And Lord, as we begin this new week, we pray that no matter what happens, we will lean on you and trust, knowing that nothing is impossible for you. And we give thanks for that knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a, one quick announcement. We had sent out a broadcast email to the church family last week. And if you didn't receive the notice, please email the church or one of us and give us your email address so that we can be sure we're keeping you in the loop. And um, as we had announced, the hope is that we can begin holding services in the church on Sunday, September the 13th. And of course, all of this depends on any upcoming directives from the Department of Health. And as we get closer to that date, we'll be announcing how we'll carry 
this out, but the current thought is that we'll have two different services with time in between to clean and folks will sign up for a particular time slot so that will stay within the guidelines for numbers. But you'll be hearing from us and from the elders in the coming weeks. And as we close our service, we invite you to join with us as we sing together, He's Got the Whole World. <clears throat> keep you and the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you to fill you with his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week everyone. We miss you.